Greetings. Today I'd like to talk about the timecode accuracy of the DJ Osmo Pocket 3. It's a consumer device that actually supports jamming timecode, which has until recently been pretty uncommon. Usually jamming timecode is something that is reserved for higher end cameras, cine cameras, etc. And the typical workflow for that is that you take a generator and connect it to your camera and sync them. And if you really want to do it right, you leave the generator connected to the camera all the time because cameras tend to have not very accurate clocks. And so the generators, which do this way around, this is a Betso TCX2, by the way. The generators feed accurate time into the camera so that the camera doesn't drift. And when you import the stuff into your timeline in your editor, everything lines up. And that's a great benefit for if you got hundreds of clips or you're doing multicam and so that, you know, external audio and you want to line them all up, doing that manually can take hours before you'd even start editing. Time code just makes that a snap, right? But in order for that to work, you need to be able to rely on the time code and know that it is accurate. And so that's what we want to test here because cameras typically don't have very accurate clocks. And the problem with the DJI Osmo is that you are restricted to its clock because you cannot leave the generator connected or at least you could but then you'd be recording the time code as an audio track and then in post you'd have to convert the audio time code into file time code before you can bring it in if you jam on the osmo it is a jam once and then it runs from its internal clock it does not allow you to leave the generator connected all the time. Or rather, if you do, it doesn't do anything with it. So that's what I wanted to test, is how accurate is the Osmo? And to do that, I started a test where I jammed it with the Betso starting from zero. And then at various intervals, I went and took pictures of the Osmo screen and the Betso screen to compare how far off they were. And is it consistently off? Because consistency is like the really important part. If you have a delta in your time code and it's always the same delta, then that's okay because you can account for that. You, for example, the camera that you are watching me on the HDMI output into the Blackmagic Video Assist is a consistent four frame delay. So on the Betso that I have going into the Video Assist, I have programmed a four frame offset. And when I load that into my editor, it just lines up immediately and I don't have to do anything. Most editors also allow you to apply an offset in the editor itself. So again, if you know that all of your clips from a particular camera are going to be off by three, four frames, five frames, whatever it is, you can account for that and you don't have to go and do anything special for it, right? You just import, apply your offsets, and start editing. When time code is not consistent, now it will slow down your post process because you have to go through and check every clip to determine is it accurate or not, or has it drifted? And it doesn't really matter if it drifts forward or it drifts back, it's, it drifted and is gonna require manual correction. And so you're gonna to have to go in and fiddle with every clip and that will take time and slow down your post process. So let's get into it. So before we get into testing the accuracy of the DJI Osmo Pocket 3's time code. I thought I'd do a quick demo of how you actually jam it. 
This is a Betso TCX2. All of my generators are Betso. I am using a Deity C21. That's Casper 21 cable that has been modified by Gotham Sound to replace the 3.5 millimeter connector with a BNC connector, which is used by the Betzos. This cable is basically in the connector here is a little USB audio class device that is converting the analog from the time code in to a single channel of digital audio that is readable by the Osmo. I'm gonna change the exposure now to make the screens more readable. And you can see that we've got a solid, very loud signal coming in. The Betso is actually set to its minimum volume level of minus 30 dBU, and it's still almost peaking out the Osmo. And you can see that the time code is not matching up with the Betso because it does not continuous sync time code like bigger cameras. So in order to get it to sync, we have to go into the menus, scroll down to time code. And you'll note that it pops up a thing saying connect now. And if we close that, it has not synced. It does not sync if it's already connected. Instead, I'm going to have to disconnect it and then reconnect it. And now it syncs. And it won't sync again until you disconnect and reconnect. And you can see that the time code pretty much lines up at this point. So that's a quick demo of how you sync time code on the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Okay, here we have a sequence of photos I took with my mobile showing what the Betso on the left is displaying as its time code and what the Osmo Pocket 3 on the right is showing. This is the first taken approximately one minute after recording was started. The first 01 hours because the Betso was set to start at 01, 00, 00. So this is really one minute, but it shows as one hour and one minute. And all subsequent photos will have the same one hour offset. So as you can see, right after starting, the Osmo is reporting that it's actually about three frames slow, right? So you see 22 here, and this is 25 turning into 26. You can see it's a little ghosted there. So it's probably like three and a half frames. And I have done this many times, and the Osmo always shows up as being a little behind when you first sync it. Here we are at the 30 minute mark, and you can see that the Osmo is reporting that it is about four frames behind. Here we are at the one hour mark, and we are again approximately four frames behind. Here we are at the hour and a half mark, and we are maybe edging towards four and a half frames behind. You can see that the 16 is turning into 17 here on the Betso, and we're on one turning into two on the Osmo. Here we are at the two hour mark, and we've actually caught up a little bit. We're 23 here, 26 turning into 27 here, so that's like three and a half frames. And then here we are at the three hour mark. And now we are in the area of about four and a half frames, right? So we got 20 here, 
And we've got 24 ghosting into 25 over here on the Betso. Here we are at the four hour mark. And you can see we've actually caught up a little bit. We are five mostly into six. And over here on the Betso, we're at 18. So we're in the two and a half frames range. Here we are at the five hour mark. You can see we're seven ghosting into eight. And over here, we are showing eight, right? With a little bit of a ghost, can't tell if that's going into the nine, probably going into the nine because a seven wouldn't look like that. So we've even caught up a little bit more. Now we have the six hour mark. And again, we're in the close to one frame difference showing 21, 22 with a little bit of ghosting between numbers. And at this point I had to leave it for the night. So I came back the next morning and here we are at the 19 hour mark. And you can see that we've drifted off a little bit again, right? So you've got the Osmo showing five drifting into six and you've got the Betso showing Kind of hard, but it looks like the seven drifting into eight. So we're more in like the two frames range. But that's just the displays. What happens when you actually import clips and how far off are they? And so here I've got DaVinci Resolve and I've loaded, I didn't record snippets at every interval. I did only three different intervals. And so we will test them here, right? So I've got the three clips from the Osmo and I've got the three recordings from the Scorpio. So we'll make a new timeline. We'll call it sync test. And we will select all of these clips And we will say insert using time code. Now we can see because of the time range, we've got a big um, fastness. I will jump all the way to the beginning. So obviously at the very, very beginning, we got nothing. So we'll jump. The Scorpio recordings all started a little bit before the video. So we'll jump to where the video starts and we'll hit play here. So this is an actual sync test of me at approximately the two hour mark. Actually, we'll switch over to the edit view because it'll make it a little easier to see the, the audio. Since I started the time code sync test. So here we can see that these are actually pretty much spot on. So even though at the two hour mark, it showed us as being a few frames off in the audio, we can see that it's pretty close. And if we compare the video, you can see, if you're watching the hand, it's pretty close to where the snap is, right? Same thing on this one. Well, it's a little harder to see my hand on that one. So you don't really hear any double echo or anything like that. And it's really pretty close. So great. So now we will jump to the next clip. And again, skipping forward to where the video starts. This, this is, is a video, video sync, sync test, test at, at approximately the five, five hour mark. mark. So here you can tell it's already quite a bit off, right? And if we skip forward, these snaps are a little quiet, but you can definitely see one, two, three. They're about three frames off. Again. And if we skip forward a little bit more, when I did the snaps with the other hand, I snap a lot higher, a lot louder with my, my right hand. you can clearly hear the offset in the audio. 
And so again, one, two, three, about three frames off. If I select this clip and I say nudge right, one, two, three. And then let's jump back to the beginning of this. This is a video sync test at approximately the five hour mark. And so what you can hear here is that it's really close, but it's probably like half a frame off. And so you get that just a hair of phasing between the two clips. Again, a video sync test at approximately the five hour mark. And you can still hear just that tiny bit of offset between the snaps. So you could go into the Fairlight page and then you can nudge subframe in the Fairlight page, but we definitely had to correct this one. And if you were doing external audio, you would probably be muting the audio coming from the camera because that's your scratch track. You're gonna have the external audio as a lav or a boom or whatever on whoever. And so you're not gonna hear that phasing in that case. And for video sync, if you're doing multicam, subframe, half a frame is not really going to make a difference. And so let's jump out to the last one. And this one was at the 19 hour mark. So it's been sitting for quite a while. And you can see from the snaps that it's basically right on. However, the video on the camera versus the audio, you can see here, that's basically the snap there. And then we got two frames to the audio. And if we come back over to this one, So that's the snap one. So we've got one to two frames difference between the video and even the audio coming from the camera. And then you can see that that is maybe a frame. Yeah, that's basically a frame in front of the audio from the Scorpio. So the camera time sync is now actually slightly ahead of the, the Scorpio instead of being behind it, which is what you frequently see. So the clock on the Osmo has accelerated where usually what you see with camera clocks is, is that they slow, they're behind and they slow, they, they, they come always come slow behind the audio but here it's actually moved up now to beat the audio. So in conclusion, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is reasonably close on its time code, but you are still going to have to check each and every clip for accuracy. So it'll help in terms of bulk import and getting things lined up close, but you're still gonna want a clap or a slate or something to help make sure that each clip is accurately lined up. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Thanks, cheers.